Can you see? See Freud, Yona. Yes. What is the first impression? Uh, I don't want to name some people, but uh, um, he looks very angry and uh, apparently critical of everyone and everything. Anything and very difficult to say hello to. <laughs> Imagine him being the therapist. It would have been like a tough love kind of therapy. Right. Honey, what is your impression? I find him narcissistic. I mean, uh, he he has something like uh, he thinks something of himself. <laughs> so. so we call him Papa Freud. Sabka Malik ek. All schools of psychoanalysis ultimately start from here in some way. So we always call. Uh, Papa Freud and Mama Klein. So these are like very strong founders in the psychoanalytic movement. So this is his first book and we should start with reading in original right? certain parts of it, if not completely. So we'll read only certain parts of it. It's some parts for discussion. Okay. So let us go into it. So as a convention, we never miss this. So let us read this. Start from here. Would anyone like to read it? Preface to the first edition. There are two prefaces. One written by Brewer and second written by Freud. And this part is co-authored, right? This book, many, this book is largely a co-author. So we will see preface to the first edition written, written by uh, okay, so let us see what Freud writes. The preface is, I think, joint. Yeah, the preface is joint. Okay, it's almost joint. Yeah, it's not one by the one by each of them. It's joint. Fine. So let's look at the. Let's start from the alpha of psychoanalysis in original. Would anyone like to read it? Preface to the first edition. Should, should I read it? Uh, wherever there is a discussion to be made, I will come in. Wherever you have a question, you can stop and ask questions. Yeah, please go on. Okay. Um, in, in 1893, we published a preliminary communication on a new method of examining and treating hysterical phenomena. To this, we added as concisely as possible the theoretical conclusions at which we had arrived. We are here reprinting this preliminary communication to serve as a thesis which it took our purpose to illustrate and prove. We have appended to it. Just a moment. So, preliminary communication was published before. And what it was trying to bring to the people was simple fact, a new method of examining and treating historical phenomena. Because at that point, the historical phenomena was thought of to be completely biochemical. And almost like an organic sickness. But they were attempting something psychological. So it was a completely different way of approaching the sickness. So they say, we published in 1893, a preliminary communication 
or a new method of examining and treating historical phenomena, which is the method of talking cure or the method of psychoanalysis. Okay. To this we add, as concisely as possible, theoretical conclusions we had arrived. That when they tried to practice talking cure, which is when they tried to practice psychoanalysis in that state, whatever the state it was, what they found, they wanted to communicate those principles. That when you practice talking cure, what was the first thing they found? Yes, Kevana, please go on. We have appended to it a series of case histories, the selection of which could not unfortunately be determined on purely scientific grounds. Our experience is derived from private practice in an educated and lit literate so social class. And the subject mat matter with which we deal often touches upon our patients' most intimate lives and histories. It would be a grave breach of confidence to publish material of this kind, with the risk of the patients being recognized and their acquaintances being informed of facts which were confided only to the physician. Right. So this is true even today. That we cannot do much research in psychoanalysis because of the same issue. That we are dealing with the most intimate knowledge about patients, and nobody would like that to be go that to go public. So confidentiality being so critical, right? We even today cannot do research beyond the point in psychoanalysis, even with the permission of the patients, because we just cannot. Uh, expose or allow information to go out in the public domain because we are dealing with the most intimate information related to people i think there's been an issue she uh honey got disconnected i think Yeah, exactly. Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Um, it has therefore been impossible for us to make use of some of the most instructive and convincing of our observations. This, of course, applies especially to all those cases in which sexual and marital relations play an important etiological part. Etiological means causal part, where something related to the marital relations or sexuality is at the cause of psychological suffering. So etiology means the causal part, the root part. Yeah. Thus it, thus it comes about that we are only able to produce very incomplete evidence in favor of our view that sexuality seems to play a principal part in the pathogenesis of hysteria as a source of physical traumas and as a motive for defense. Right. That so, is for repressing. Yeah. So this is very important. Thus, it comes about that we are able to produce very incomplete evidence in favor of our view. What is our view? That sexuality plays an important part in the pathogenesis. Pathogenesis means genesis of pathology genesis of the problem root of the problem root cause of the problem okay. pathogenesis of hysteria means what they are saying is that the root cause of hysteria is essentially something repressed related to sexuality so in the unconscious mind something is related to sexuality not acceptable by reality or morality repressed in the unconscious mind and from there causing the problem of hysteria as also source of psychical, psychical traumas. So psychical traumas and the motive for defense that because something sexual is involved, the repression barrier does not allow material to pass by and it's so difficult to find the cause of it. That is for repressing ideas from consciousness. That because something sexual, something immoral, socially unacceptable, shameful is involved, 
the ideas are repressed in the unconscious mind it is precisely observations of a markedly sexual nature that we have been obliged to leave unpublished so that part we cannot publish in a book because they are very sexual in nature and remember this is 125 years back yeah please go on uh yeah uh, it is precisely observations of a mark mark markedly sex markedly sexual nature that we have been obliged to leave unpublished yeah well as you said everything that is of sexual nature we have not published uh the case histories are followed by a number of theoretical reflection and in a final chapter on therapeutics the technique of the cathartic method is propounded just as it has grown up under the hands of the neurologist what he says is the case histories are followed by a theoretical reflection so in this book what he does is he presents a case right uh, concealing the identity maintaining confidentiality and that below the case gives what are the theoretical conclusions that come from that case and these conclusions over a period of time will become the fundamental principles of psychoanalysis so this is how we created psychoanalysis case after case from the case what do you learn and when you learn the same thing over and over again you propose it as a principle so it is from clinical work that the fundamentals of psychoanalysis come about that case after case you analyze and find and when those findings repeat you propose them as principles okay so this is what he is doing here he is slowly building up the whole thing that under every case he is giving what are the theoretical conclusions from this case and what is the method and the end of the book he talks about cathartic method what is catharsis whatever emotions are pent up you release those emotions that is catharsis so if you are angry at the father you should release anger towards the father if you are if you have repressed pain of some memory you should allow the pain and weep it out if you are envious of somebody you should feel that envy and let it go so contrary to the normal position that we should all either run away from these feelings or we should control and repress those feelings the idea here is to engage with those feelings invite them feel them fully and let them go this is called the method of catharsis right? normal representation would be if you are very sad and you deeply weep after the weeping you feel healthy and light because catharsis has happened right so this is what is the method is talking about yeah kid uh i have lost okay uh, if at some points divergent and indeed contradictory opinions are expressed this is not to be regarded as evidence of any fluctuation in our views it arises from the natural and justifiable differences between the opinions of two observers who are agreed upon the facts and their basic reading of them but who are not invariably at one in their interpretation and conjecture so this talks about the difference between brewer and freud that both of them were looking at the cases both of them were seeing the effect of the talking cure but brewer was not as focused on sexuality as freud was so freud was very focused on sexuality compared to brewer and therefore there were differences in the opinion and obviously after this freud went on his own working alone but this is like stage 0 of the foundation of psychoanalysis and then we have the preface to the second edition hari would you like to read uh you are muted yeah yeah the interest 
which to an ever increasing degree is being directed to psychoanalysis seems now to be extending to these studies on hysteria. The publisher desires to bring out a new edition of the book, which is present out of print. It appears now in a reprint without any alterations, though the opinions and methods which were put forward in the first edition have since undergone for far reaching and profound developments. So far as I personally am concerned, I have since that time had no active dealings with the subject. I have had no part in its important development and I could add nothing fresh to what was written in 90, 1895. So I have been able to do no more than express a wish that my two contributions to the volume should be reprinted without alterations. So this seems to be more written by Brewer. Yeah. But obviously Freud is on the journey, as I call it, I often say about Jung, he is a man on a motorcycle, moving from one concept to the other without any patience to really go deep and wide into the concept. So Freud is also moving very fast in his discovery of psychoanalysis. So you can go ahead. The second chapter, second paragraph seems to be coming from Freud. Well, as regards the book too, the only possible decision has been that the rest of the first edition shall be reprinted without alteration. The developments and changes of my views during the course of 15 years of work have been too far reaching for it to be possible to attach them to my earlier exposition without entirely destroying its essential character nor have I any reason for wishing to eliminate this evidence of my initial views. Even today, I regard them not as errors, but as valuable uh, first approximations to knowledge, which could only be fully acquired after long and continuous efforts. The attentive reader will be able to detect in the present book the germs of all that has since been added to the theory of catharsis. For instance, the part played by psychosexual factors and infantilism, the importance of dreams and the unconscious symbolism. And I can give no better advice to anyone interested in the development of catharsis into psychoanalysis than to begin with studies on hysteria and thus follow the path of which I myself have trodden. So you can see here, uh, he is talking about psychosexual factors and infantilism. Infantilism means what happens in early infant stage of our life, where we yeah. think like an infant thinks. We are not mature people. We don't think at that stage the way we think now. Our thought yes. process is the thought process of an infant. And therefore, what happens there? informs us even today as adults and more so in the area of pathology. He is also talking about the significance of dreams and unconscious symbolism. Okay. How the unconscious mind... What is unconscious symbolism? What is it? The, in the dreams, the unconscious mind speaks through us, to us through symbols. For example, I might see in the dream a tiger eating a rabbit and that may mean the tiger is me and the rabbit is my friend or my father against whom I have anger. So the, the unconscious is talking to us through symbols. In the dream, a tiger eating a rabbit is actually me eating up my friend out of aggression. So this is the language of unconscious symbolism which comes out in dreams and fantasies. So slowly Freud is appreciating right, in his work that not only psychosexual factors are important but what happens in early life, the infantile stage is important and equally important is analysis of dreams and the language of symbols found in the dreams. Okay. So in his work, Slowly, Freud is appreciating all of this. 
that apart from catharsis these things also are important so we come to the next one on the psychical mechanism of hysterical phenomena preliminary communication so we can read a few lines from this and then we'll go to the case of nao right the real case of nao yeah so they are talking in brief about the psychological phenomena which they feel is responsible for various manifestations of hysteria and this is of course they are talking more than 100 years back when it all started slowly and gradually but it's necessary to have this historical perspective when we are going deep into the subject so anyone who can read it Okay. A chance observation has led us over a number of years to investigate a great variety of different forms and symptoms of hysteria with a view to discovering this precipitating cause the event which provoked the first occurrence often many years earlier of the phenomena in question in the great majority of cases it is not possible to establish the point of origin by a simple interrogation of the patient however thoroughly it may be carried out so what we see is here is very important that first he talks about that hysteria can take various forms right the manifestation can come in a variety of forms and what happens there there is a precipitating cause of the suffering that cause is most often in childhood and more often than not if we talk to the person in a conscious setting the person is not able to recollect it mm. so it is in the unconscious or it has to do with the first 3 4 years of life which are very difficult to remember so more often than not we are not able to go to that event by case history by taking case history of the person no matter how thoroughly we take the case history we are not able to go to the root of that precipitating event which caused hysteria or something related to hysteria in the first instance in childhood so the person may have come to us as an adult he may have come to us when he is 18 years of age or 25 years of age but the root of his problem lies in the first 5 years of age and that root may not be remembered by the person so no matter how thoroughly we take the case history how well we talk to the person how expressive and honest the person is more often than not we cannot find the real root of the problem by ordinary talking the way we talk and therefore some new technique is necessary to reach the unconscious mind so we can find out what is the root which is not possible to find out in the normal talking and this takes us to this whole idea of psychoanalytic therapy and why it is done in a particular way so later on we will see that when freud created this whole setting we call it setting or it is called psychoanalytic frame psychoanalytic frame or setting how the conduct of therapy should happen that the person should go to the therapist once a week or thrice a week or five days a week the session should happen in the office of the therapist the person should lie down on the couch the therapist should not be in the line or side but behind the person who is lying down on the couch the person who lies down on the couch speaks whatever comes to his mind without any censorship from that the therapist is able to make out what is in the unconscious and do interpretations which induce change in the person so 
through the act of interpretation the conscious is made unconscious and the feelings of the unconscious are brought out in a cathartic way at times without the interpretation also in his own flow the person can reach there either ways healing change happens now freud thought that why this is so difficult so he said what are the basic forms of human relationships and he found out three the first was the parent and the child right one archetypal form right or one typical form of human relationships that one is the protector and the nurturer the second is the receiver and the obedient one the second form of relationship that freud thought of was that of siblings brothers and sisters or friends and the third form he thought of was of the teacher and the student and he said most of human relationships actually are mixtures of these three and neither of these three nor their mixtures in themselves are very good for healing and therefore a fourth type of relationship is necessary that of the therapist and the client and this has to be different from all the three although it will have components of the three but it has to be different into itself radically different in terms of experience so freud created this whole setting or the psychoanalytic frame or the unique way in which the therapist and the client relate to each other for healing right so what he is saying is uh yeah please go on uh this is in part because what is in question is often some experience which the patient dislikes discussing but principally because he is genuinely unable to recollect it and often has no suspicion of the casual con uh, causal connection between the precipitating event and the pathological phenomena as a rule it is necessary to hypnotize the patient and to arouse his memories under hypnosis of the time at which the symptom made its first appearance and this has been done it becomes possible to demonstrate the connection in the clearest and the most convincing fashion so this is where this math this is where uh -huh. he was trying to reach the unconscious mind through hypnosis but yeah. soon he realized everyone could not be hypnotized and the yeah. results of hypnosis often were not very long standing so then he yes. moved from hypnosis to free association yeah so what we can do is we can stop for the day okay and continue from next time okay okay so next time we we'll yeah. continue some some part of this preliminary communication and then move to nao the case of nao okay, okay. see you then thank you see you thank you, thank you.